When the dragon saw that he had been hurled to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. So what is this pursuing of the woman who had given birth to the great child? Well, I think this is, he immediately goes, he falls into the Jerusalem temple, and he inspires the Jews to begin persecuting the church. And this is what we're told about in, I believe, Acts 8 and 9 and, and elsewhere. Um, this is the persecution that breaks out in Jerusalem. He pursues the woman. Now, he is being called the dragon here because when satan is operating in the form of just trying to trying to inspire pure violence he is referred to as a dragon but when he is trying to deceive in a more crafty way he's referred to as a serpent as in genesis 3. so i think that um he's referred to the dragon here because in the historical narrative that revelation is telling he is um he is inspiring the Jews to persecute the um, the church in Jerusalem, the Jerusalem church. So um, the woman was given two wings of a great eagle so that she might fly to the place prepared for her in the wilderness where she would be taken care of for a time, times, and half a time out of the serpent's reach. So again, I think this is referring to the... Um, the the church being given protection for a temporary period of time by the hellenistic or or Cumene, by the roman empire so um um when it says two wings of a great eagle um this is referencing a, a passage in revelation where the israelites are being brought out of e uh, egypt so there's a connection to that too but the eagle is um the eagle phase of israel's history um i'm forgetting the other animals i'm uh, I'm slow, but there's the ox, um, eagle. The, this is, I think, the faces of the cherubim, right? In, in any case, the eagle is associated with the um, in the in the history of Israel. It's divided into four animals, and in the eagle, and I know I'm not defending this, but I'm just kind of repeating what I heard Sarah say. The eagle period is the exilic period when um, Gentile empires rule over um, Israel. And eagle symbolism is also often associated with Gentile empires. So the way I interpret this, and I think it makes the most sense, is the two wings of a great eagle is actually the Roman Empire itself. Again, I, I mean, this is one of the things where I can't die on this hill because I don't really know. Uh, but... Um, but I think, um, just given everything else, um, I think that uh, the two wings of the great eagle is the Roman Empire, so that she she might be uh, she might fly to the place prepared for her in the wilderness. Again, wilderness is Gentile imagery. The the Jews, uh, sorry, the Christians go out of Jerusalem into the Gentile world, uh, where she she would be taken care of for a time, time and half time. That's referring to the same. 1260 days of before um and out of the serpent's reach um the, okay so this is very interesting right so think about it who is the main figure in this first attack of satan this is a first attack he pursues the woman as the dragon right um, the main figure in that is Saul of Tarsus. So Satan raises up Saul of Tarsus to um, persecute the uh, persecute the church, but obviously Paul is converted and that plan fails, um, and and the the um, the Christians are given protection by the Roman Empire. So that's actually the primary reason why the plan fails is because Satan wasn't he hadn't yet deceived the Roman Empire. Um, so. Um, uh, yeah, this is where it gets really cool, right? So Satan's first attack failed because um, he he tried to get the Jews to just stamp out the church while it was still localized in Jerusalem. But they, I mean, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church, right? They they expanded outwards and they just kept growing and kept getting more and more, um, kept making more and more Christians, kept baptizing people, uber based, a great commission. Um, Satan he he couldn't ha he couldn't stop them. So what's his next plan? Well, it says then from his mouth. The serpent spewed water like a river to overtake the woman and sweep her away with the torrent. What is this water? What is this poisonous water that is spewed from the serpent? Now, we're talking, he goes from being referred to as a dragon to the serpent. So you should think he's going from violence to more deception. Well, what is the main deception at this time in the in the 50s um, and in, yeah, 40s, 50s and into the 60s? What is, sort? well, not, I, I don't know if, I don't know if I got the timeline right there. It might just be the 40s and 50s. Well, what is the main threat that is attacking the woman, that would overtake the woman, which is not pure violence, but it's more like deception? Well, I think it is clearly, given what we have from the New Testament, it is clearly the Judaizing heresy. So after Satan fails to get the Jews to directly destroy the church, he then inspires heretics and, and, and other people to... Um, to try and cling to the oral law, uh, to cling to the demonic oral law, right? Um, 
and uh, and this, as Paul says, this is heresy. Like we cannot be in communion with these people. So that was Satan's second attempt. Now, here is the great irony. I posted about this um, a little while ago, but the great irony here, and it just shows the way God works in history to trick the devil, um, to reverse his plans. Right, the uh, the uh, plans of the wicked they they fall into their own nets. Right, as we read about in the Psalms, um, they shoot themselves in their own foot. In their own foot. Um, um, the very man that Satan raised up for his first attack, his first attempt to destroy the church, was Saul of Tarsus. The very man who is the most significant person to thwart Satan's second attack on the church, which again is the Juda Judaizing heresy, is that very same Saul of Tarsus, right? It's it's St. Paul. So, uh, and we know this from all his letters against the uh, the Judaizing heresy. So, um, um, the Satan had raised this man up and by doing so that was god's opportunity to convert paul and then satan is like crap that failed uh, my first attack failed so let me try to deceive them with a judaizing heresy oh wait that just failed because paul just told everyone that these guys are heretics and he proved them wrong using the bible um so so you see that's like this points to like the absurd the the way in which god triumphs over history and the way in which Evil always is self-destructive in the end, um, and and yeah. So God deceived the serpent here. Um, anyways, um, but okay. So so uh, we we've sort of established that my interpretation is um, that his mouth. Uh, or the water from the serpent's mouth is the Judaizing heresy, which attempts to overtake the woman and, and sweep her away. Okay, verse 16. But the earth helped the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the river that the dragon had spewed out of its mouth. Okay, so remember, the earth, or the land here, is Israel. It's Jerusalem. It's the Jews. So the Jews, the earth, the land, help the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing that heresy that the dragon had spewed out. So we know this from the Bible. The Jews became even more um, determined, um, more, they believed even more in the oral law after Jesus. And it sort of became this sort of like divide between the Christians who held to the Bible and who held to righteous tradition passed on from the apostles and the what Jesus himself, I'm not being anti-Semitic or anything, it, Jesus himself calls the Jerusalem or the Jewish oral law tradition demonic. So that oral law tradition, which tried, Satan tried to spew into, sorry, tried to spew into the church, um, that Judaizing heresy is, ends up being rejected by the church and taken on instead by the Jews. And I think by the Judaizing heretics as well, because they help the woman by opening their mouth and swallowing it because they're cut off, right? They are cut off from the church. This is part of St. Paul's, um, what he was trying to do. He was trying to make sure Christians and pastors and bishops are bold enough to fight against the Judaizing heresy to um, and to excommunicate when necessary. So I think the Jews, what's being referred to is the Jews themselves believing in the oral law and sort of them being the ones being deceived by the serpent instead of the, instead of the church and also this cutting off of the Judaizing heretics who are count who are who are um, counted as if they were, apostate Jews as well. So Judaizing Christians and um, and um, the Jews themselves, the apostate Jews, the violent church persecuting Jews, um, they are put in the same category here and they swallow that river. They swallow the Judaizing heresy so that the church doesn't. Um, and then verse 17, then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to wage war against the rest of her offspring. So see here, we had originally the dragon, then he becomes a serpent, and then he's a dragon again. So the first attack against the church in Jerusalem, defined, it's like violent, just vulgar persecution. That is Satan operating in the, in the dragon mode. But um, when he's being more deceptive, like in Genesis 3, when he's trying to corrupt the church from within with the Judaizing heresy, he become, becomes a serpent. When that fails, again, largely due to the very man he raised up for his original attack, um, he then becomes a dragon again. And this, I think, we are now going into the neuronic phase of Roman's history. We're talk I'm talking about Nero, the crazy, like, bat... Um, I don't know, don't want to swear, but a uh, crazy man who really persecuted the church. I mean, the I don't know if this has actually occurred in history, but um, I forget who documented this, but Christians were like placed in his garden on like tied in the garden like and then burned alive. And um, he used Christians burning bodies 
to like light his garden in in the night. So Nero was a very evil man, right? So when we're we're now moving to chapter thirteen, and we have we have the church has um, through the intercession of Christ in heaven, the um, or not intercession in the sense of a saint, but through Christ's um, working in history now, because he has ascended to heaven and he is waging war on the devil. He protects his bride, unlike Adam, by um, giving her wings of a great eagle, by giving them the Roman temporarily the Roman Empire to protect the church. Um, and then um, then we have the Judaizing heresy. He also protects the church largely by converting St. Paul. And then we have, um, um, so that's where we are in history, right? And then we, the dragon was enraged at the woman because both his plans failed. Um, so he went off to rage war against the rest of her offspring, those who keep God's commandments and hold fast to the testimony about Jesus. So he's trying to persecute the whole church now. And the way he tries to do that is by corrupting the entire Hellenistic Oikumene, by corrupting the whole Roman Empire, which is what we see in the next chapter immediately.